cultural Douglas MacArthur saying, you're off to Manila, you're off to Vietnam. I mean, this is about cultural sensitivity and respect and being one of, uh, of many equals participating in the triennial. Leaving the middle one, probably no reason whatsoever. It's very exciting. We've got lots of people working on site at the moment. Everybody's probably working towards fairly tight deadlines now, as there's only a couple of days to go. Yeah, it's very beautiful here at night. Nakamura's a piece here in Canada, this thing. We're now just working through with most artists trying to finish their work. I'm trying to actually get onto the embassy at the moment. I'll also like to contact the Australia India Council to see if they can actually help. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. The artists are working under extreme pressure in an environment that's very competitive in which your work is on show with other people's work and that um, in itself can pose problems. When we conceived the triennial some 10 years ago, we were somewhat in the dark. Now what we've got is one of the world's great international contemporary art events. Yes, now we really do know what we're doing with this project. Our audiences have nearly doubled in the time that the triennial has been underway. Ten years ago, the Asia-Pacific Triennial seemed to be a radical project. Now I think we see the future in this exhibition and the Triennial has a theme beyond the future, which is paradoxical. Artists don't really try to predict the future, but many of the works in this exhibition are about artists helping their communities survive the present and plan for a new future. is that values of the past are always present. The last APT we looked back um, into the past and this time we're looking forward. There's a reverse flow. We come from the island of Niue in between Tonga and the Samoa Island. Niue is the uh, largest coral atoll in the world. The theme of the of our part of the exhibition is to create a shrine of some sort. We created this inside a container because it reflected the movement of food around the Pacific. It was the container that actually imported Western and colonising cultures to little places like Niue and now they have returned it to be viewed as contemporary art. The dancers, uh, they will actually <laughs> take on uh, the costumes and something will happen to them. And uh, the audience, if they watch and if they participate in the performance by their presence, before they leave, they will have to cleanse themselves. Otherwise, only goodness knows what will happen, and I don't want to be responsible for anything. <laughs> this performance that they that they will put on it has a um, sort of a trance or hallucination components to it becomes then contemporary art in this context. In indigenous contexts, there was not really a separation between art and religion. Art, as much as religion, was entwined in life.
Indonesian artists are very interesting artists. They conceive of their art as part of the social process. They don't sense the art-life distinction that we know of in the West. Moliono takes the question of the burning of cars and the question of origin as part of his work. Uh, ini adalah tulisan ini adalah ini tulisan Cina. My work shows a burned car with a text, Cina, which means Chinese, showing social upheaval in Jakarta in May 1998, where Chinese became victim. The artist thought you that did very political work in Indonesia. You worried for your safety for doing this sort of work? Does this, um, do you have these troubles? Di reformasi itu semua orang boleh bicara, tetapi I think uh, he feels that it's not a problem of to be afraid or not afraid. This is his duty to show and make people aware of what happened in his country. history of the country that he's lived in all his life and it's the tragedy that's happening to ordinary people. Well I guess you've got the, um, the blackness of the, the bodies and the, the way the hands are held out in appeal and who is there to answer the appeal? Who can answer the appeal? And because nobody answers the bodies burn. This is a demonstration of a one man's feeling, but it's hopefully in his terms going to be every man's feeling about an absolute tragedy for the human race, for human beings, for people. And people left here in tears. This part of exhibit is called Crossing Border, and I think it's particularly relevant to my work because I was born and raised in Taiwan, however educated in the United States, and still lives there. Crossing Borders is also about crossing borders between artistic media, between music, between new technology and art. It's about collaborations between artists. In this work, I invite guests and visitors to come and write letters of either gratitude or forgiveness and leave it on the shelf. And at the end of the day, the museum will send it out for you. I created these booths for people to write letters, uh, for people who pass away or no longer with them, or even just to friends to change their relationship.
when you actually look at Australia's participation in the Triennial, you then realise the incredible richness and complexity and the diversity of Australian culture. Shenzhen's work confronts the materialism of contemporary society. Yeah, we'll just try one of those small, one of these ones first. Using discarded computers, abacuses and Chinese chamber pots. Inside there's a vertical display. It's a work which is about looking back to values which may have been lost. This work describes a confrontation you know, between Asia's development and Western influence in such an area. The inside is a confrontation between the Chinese chamber pots with the garbage of high technology. Outside is to consist of with many beads of Chinese abacus and a Buddhist prayer. Ramana Hussain was an installation and performance artist who lived in Mumbai. Her work is particularly concerned with issues of communal healing, which became rather ironic in the end because at the same time she was battling a personal illness which eventually claimed her life. Sonabai has produced a major installation piece for this exhibition, working with her son Daroga Ram. Sonabai started work in a, in a village tradition where houses were decorated by women at certain times of the year, at certain festivals. Sonabai herself, she started to create her own personal space within her house, quite aside from those festivals. And so the tradition she inherited, she's pushed further forward, she's made it more personal, and to an in highly inventive world of fantasy images, she's created these extraordinary spaces which have captured the imagination to a point where she's now exhibited in Delhi as one of the contemporary master artists. I guess my intention here is to take people on a kind of sensory journey, I suppose. Um, perhaps to sort of just allow them to experience a kind of brief transcendence of time. Mm -hmm. um, a few things came up. Um, time, we, we had to finish by 11 each night. and. At the eleventh hour, our motherboard on the computer went.
performance art means that the artist would like to perform live with their work. We've got 1,200 litres of water on board. We've got two high pressure hoses. I'll just lay those hoses out and just have them in here. Um, the guy I just directed her, can you fix that up? It's great. Okay. I can't see. Don't worry, mate. It's locked. Nathan will go first, Patrice will go second, and the other one will go uh, after that. <laughs> The performance by Michael Tuffery and Patrice K. Kilikofe is by using these metallic balls represent different Pacific cultures. He's creating a bullfight and it's not meant to be aggressive as such as provocative. No artist talks, <laughs> no work, no interviews, okay? Party. So, um... The APT is much more than the exhibition, so we have the exhibition. Well, this is all great, but I don't understand a lot of it. Then they come back, you come out of the conference. We have the conference. Fortunately, there is no shortage of artists willing to take risks. We have the catalogue. Wang has organised for his young, contemporary, slim, attractive girl. Um, she will be in his space. We have the virtual triennial, the screen culture component and the very important education component. Also Mella Jasmer's her figures. We have the chicken up the top, the frog on the bridge, the fish near the water and the kangaroo out the back. Mela Yasma, Dutch by origin, makes jilbabs, which are the coverings that Indonesian women wear, traditional Muslim coverings. She makes them out of different animal skins. I show four different kinds of skins. It's fish. Chicken skin. One is of kangaroo skin. And one of frog leg skin. I made this work to make people aware of other people's situations and I think every country has to deal with racism, it's still like that. I think that fish suit leaves a lot to be desired. I think that every skin has another meaning in different cultures and different societies and I would like to make people more aware of their own position and of other people's countries and habits. So with these skins I invite people to go into other people's skins. Actually, your colouring suits it perfectly. So I try to open up discussions actually with this work about um, cultural items, uh, social and political circumstances and also um, religious items. We need to get all the loose glass up there knocked out because the audience is going to be down below here. So, is that okay for you to go up there and break out into the loose glass? What this performance is trying to achieve is a feeling of being within an industrial site and the mechanisms involved in that.
here I collected about 50 photos of celebrities. We all know how they look like later on, and while you are looking at the child picture, you always get a kind of surprise, surprising feeling. My uh, basic concern on this piece is uh, to remind people of the essential things of the human beings. Amanda Hing is doing an installation of photographs. The idea came from her mother to take a photograph of her for the future, for when she dies, for her funeral. Amanda Hing is um, investigating her relationship with her mother in her series. Beneath the stars, my ten guitars will play a song for you. And when you're with the one you love, this is what you do. The whole idea of that is about this utopian idea about communal life and communal play and communal fun. I wanted to do a kind of art that uh, attempts to involve the audience in, in ideas that might be of some value to them. My work is intended to represent different attitudes toward the war. To me, art is not something to give you answers but to give you questions so that you can find the answer. language, it's a way of communication. Art is a kind of expression of your life experience. Art's what you think it is, nothing more, nothing less. <laughs> 